Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. All right, we are live. Yeah. Ready to praise God? Yeah. All right, welcome to our, our Sunday worship service. We got a, God has a special service in store for all of us. He has a great word for all of us, an encouraging word. Uh, we are practicing social distancing to the best of our abilities, so... If you got face mask, wear your face mask. If you need you need a face mask, we we do have them available. We have uh, sanitizer, but you know, just practice. Be mindful of each other. Some people like hugs. Some don't want to hug. So, everybody loving though. All right. So, welcome to our uh, again Sunday worship service. Welcome church family at home. Those of you watching us online, we appreciate we appreciate you showing up. Praise God. Pastor Zena. Thank you, Pastor Junior. Good morning, church. Good morning. What a beautiful day, huh? Like, God is so good. The sun is shining, the wind is blowing. It's beautiful here. <laughs> and to top it off, we do have the presence of the Lord, and we have everyone here that could join us this morning. And so, in usual fashion, we, we pull it before we open up our service. So, let's take this time to um, give honor to our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, oh God, that you have given us the breath of life. We thank you, Lord, that you have provided strength and peace and all of those things to continue, oh God. We had an interesting week this past week, and we know that we couldn't have done it without you. And so we take this time especially, oh God, to honor you, to acknowledge you, to say thank you, to say that we love you, Lord, and we want to get to know you more and more, oh God. And so may you bless this service from beginning to end. May you have your way with us, O oh God. May you speak to us, Lord. May you lead us. May you direct us and guide us, O oh God. This is your service, Lord. We want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And so we thank you for an opportunity to do that, Lord, to fellowship with one another, but to fellowship with you, Lord. So we thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Ready to praise the Lord, everybody, this morning? You guys can stand up, clap your hands, sing your loudest. Mm -hmm. We don't judge over here. <laughs> but he is so worthy of all of our praise, yeah? Of the highest praise, amen? Amen. Hallelujah, let's sing to him. The words are in the bulletin. Same as the 
worthy of the highest praise. How great is the Lord. How awesome is he. Uh? He is mighty. He is holy. And we lift his name up this morning. Amen. Everyone's 
Thank you, Jesus. So holy. We love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. You offer more than what this world could ever offer us. And we thank you, and we praise you, and we worship you. Amen. You are 
this world to me I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold I wouldn't trade I wouldn't trade you for riches untold you are you are you are my everything. you are everybody oh my goodness I could just sit with that song for hours <laughs> okay well welcome everybody to joyful community church I see a lot of visitors lots of my family and friends um, but thank you for joining us today thank you for joining us online um, I'm just gonna give you the announcements today but um, our ADA restroom is located over there that big bright blue um, and then please no wandering around the property during service. And then a replay of our service will be on Facebook and YouTube uh, at 5.30 today. And next week is first Sunday, so we will be partaking in Holy Communion. Welcome to our Joyful Community Church Maui Facebook Watch Party. As we prepare our hearts for tithes and offering, we'd like to thank you for giving to Joyful Community Church. You may participate in this part of worship in several ways. By sending your check or money order to Joyful Community Church, P.O. Box 791, Wailuku, Hawaii 96793. You can also go to our website at www.jccmaui.com and make a donation on our Give page. Or you may choose to give online by way of our secure link that will be posted here throughout the service. Mahalo for your giving to the Lord. Praise God. All right, so now for one of my favorite times, when we get to give back to the Lord. So we're going to be taking up our tithes and offering. Brother Ron's going to come up, and he's going to be helping us and assisting us with that. If anyone needs an envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers will come, hand out an envelope. If you got any questions, they might have some answers for you as well. So but praise God. Uh, thank you for giving. I'm going to pray right now. Father, we thank you for uh, providing. Lord, we thank you for providing us with strength, with skill, understanding, and ability to earn, Lord. And we thank you that in this uh, very moment, in this season, that uh, we still have provisions, Lord, and that we can give back to you. We thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering coming in. We thank you for furthering the, the kingdom, and we thank you for our, our reach in this world. We lift up the lost souls to you, and we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we can give back to your kingdom, and we give you all the praise, 
honor and glory always. And everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And thank you for the... Um the offering and the tithes. There, there is no order just because everybody's nicely spread out. So next time, just come up as you feel comfortable and as you are led. Amen. So at this time, we are going to begin our installation. And what a wonderful opportunity we have to, to do this before you all and before the Lord. And so we do want to call up, yes, our pastor, Junior and Pastor Aubrey Anana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, if we can also call up the elders and uh, Deacon Jerry, could you also come up front too, please? Praise the Lord. Thank you all for being here this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, this is a very important. Uh, time for us as Joyful Community Church, Maui, and um, seeing what God has been doing even in the COVID season. Uh, God just continues to bless us, give us favor. Come over here, love. And, um, you know, we're just so grateful for God's uh, favor during this time. We thank God for our assisting pastors, Pastor Aubrey and Pastor Junior. Uh, we thank God for their love and for their dedication to the Lord and also to the church. A lot of people are asking, uh, what's the difference between ordination and installation? Well, actually, we have three parts. Uh, the first part is the examination. Say examination. Okay, examination is when we question our candidates, those who are becoming leaders in the church or in this local body. And uh, we ask them uh, certain questions to make sure that uh, they fit the bill and also uh, that's God's calling for their life. Uh, after the examination, we have the ordination. Say ordination. ordination. Ordination is when we actually put them into position. We give them a position, not just a title, but with that position comes with uh, comes some roles and some responsibilities. Uh, so they've been ordained, I believe, in January 2019 as assisting pastors. We had a dinner with the Ananas the other night, and we asked if the children had any questions. Of course, Saya had a question, and he said, Uncle, I thought mom and dad was already pastors, okay? They're assisting pastors. Today, we're installing them as associate pastors. What is the difference? The difference is this, assisting pastors, they have a role or a responsibility that we give them, but they do not carry the weight or the load of the church. The weight and the load of the church is upon Pastor Zina and myself. Yeah, Our job is to care for the sheep. Our job is to love you guys, to counsel, to pray, to visit, uh, to do whatever in our power to encourage your spiritual soul. But they only had certain responsibilities. But praise God, we come here today to do an installation. Say installation. installation. Amen. So you guys kind of get the gist of what we're doing today. All we're doing is just moving them from assisting pastors with only maybe one or two ministries into associate pastors to where they help carry the load, like how me and Pastor Zena carry the load. There are a lot of things that Pastor Zena and I have been doing for a while, and it, it, it gets pretty burdensome sorry i mean that's just how it is but with pastor junior and pastor aubrey coming on as associate pastors they will help us with the lord and we appreciate them and we know that god has called them here and we know that god has equipped them for such a time as this during this season and you know what hey, we're still rolling even in covid praise god hallelujah you know and so um in fact we're just trying to keep up with the lord the lord is still moving even if our um, government and even if our county is not moving as fast and, and how we would like it and, you know, how we would like to get a, a building, uh, that's just not the option right now. But what we get right now is what we're grateful for. And that's why I believe God is still blessing us is because we're just using what we got. Hey, red dirt and all, bring it on. We, we just want to meet. We just want to worship God. And we thank God for 
Pastor Junior and Pastor Aubrey for taking on this call. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for your presence, Lord God, your spirit in this place. Lord, we take this seriously because this is about souls, Lord. This is about your kingdom and what uh, you are doing, Father God. Lord, we want to fall in line with what your word says. We want to be in sync with your spirit. And so, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for William and Aubrey, Lord God, for taking this step. Lord, we appreciate you and what you are doing in this time, in this season. We love you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. An associate pastor performs other duties and responsibilities to free up the senior pastor so that the senior pastor can devote more time to counseling, praying, teaching, preaching, discipleship, home visits, and taking care of their health and home. Yeah, I got to take care of my health. Praise God. And this is going to help me do that. Therefore, an associate pastor can take on other roles such as administration, assisting other ministries, community outreach and involvement, organizational matters, and supporting the presbytery, which is our elders and our deacon. Although the words associate pastor isn't found in the Bible, Scripture does refer to them as elders, and it can be said that the associate pastors our elders by position, not age, <laughs> serving alongside the senior pastor and co-pastor with Jesus as the head of the church. That is the key for every person in leadership to acknowledge that the church belongs to Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. It is to recognize that he is the head of the church and to understand that a leader is really a servant who has not come to be served, but to serve. Hallelujah. We have a scripture reading. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 7. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Amen. Speaking for the people of the church, I present William and Aubrey Anana to be installed as associate pastors of Joyful Community Church, Maui. Amen. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and sealed as Christ's own by his Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord, Jesus Christ. And within the community of the church, some are called to be specific and uh, called to specific service as ministers of the word and sacrament, as elders and also as deacons. Recognizing the significance of each office, the church shall ordain and install individuals to order to assure fulfillment of the primary responsibilities of teaching and preaching the word, and administering the sacraments, ordering the governance of the church, and providing for ministries of care and compassion in this world. Representing the one holy and apostolic church by means of administration and presbytery of Joyful Community Church Maui, I now commission to the ministry of word and sacrament and install current assisting pastors, William and Aubrey Anana, as our associate pastors. Now I will charge our candidates. To you both, and you answer for yourselves. <laughs> Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him, Lord of all and the head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old Testament and the New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in church, in the church universal, and God's word to you? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets as expressed in our statements of faith, as authentic and reliable exposition of the scriptures, how it leads us to believe and do 
and will by uh, and will be taught and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and in submission to my leadership and guidance? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. Will you be governed and abide by our church's polity, policies and discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, answer, I will. I, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, answer, I will. I, I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity and purity of this church? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you pray for and serve the people with intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, answer, I will. I will. I had to stick that one in there, amen. We know how creative you guys are, so. You guys know how creative these guys are, right? And this is to assure that, uh, though you guys know me, I'm very formal. But we need people like this in the ministry, amen, to, to keep things going, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, moving on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Will you be a servant proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and sacrament, teaching faith and caring for people? Will you be active in government and discipline, serving in different capacities and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and the justice of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, I will. I, I will. Thank you. To the congregation, as this is a very interactive and engaged engaging um, congregation, we ask that if you could please stand with us. We believe that it's not only our um, pastor's responsibility, but it's everybody's responsibility to partake and to um, help one another. Amen. As our pastors will help us, we will help them also. I think it's only right. So, um, yeah. I get to charge all of us, even myself. <laughs> Do we, the members of this church, accept William and Aubrey Anana as our associate pastors, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to guide us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do we agree to pray for and encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow them as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, answer, we do. We, we do. do. Do we promise to stand by them in trouble and share their joys? Will we listen to the word they teach, welcome their pastoral care, and honor their authority as they seek to honor and obey Jesus Christ our Lord? If so, answer, we do. We, we do. do. At this time, we can have the presbytery and the elders lay hands upon our candidates this morning. And we will remain standing um, until we pray them out. Yes. Can everybody stretch forward their hands and uh, pray in agreement with me during this time? Almighty God, in every age you have chosen servants to speak your word and to lead your people. We thank you for William or Junior and Aubrey and Anna, whom you have called to serve you. Give them special gifts to do their special work. Continue to fill William and Aubrey with your Holy Spirit so they may have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and be a faithful disciple as long as they shall live. We say this and we pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Junior and Aubrey Anana, now that you have both heard of your new roles and some of your responsibilities, <laughs> presented before this congregation, have been charged, confirmed by this congregation, and sealed by prayer and the laying on of hands, we now acknowledge you as our brand new associate pastors of Joyful Community Church, Maui. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You may be seated, church. Thank you. 
Can we also call up the Anana children? We also wanted to honor them too. And we want you all to be aware, you know, to also pray for the family too. You know, we're not afraid, but spiritual attacks going come because they have taken on this position. This is not an easy position. This is not like, hey, look at me. I'm an associate pastor. There, there are great responsibilities that come with this because we're dealing with souls. We're dealing with the spiritual realm. And we're, we're thankful for Pastor Junior and Pastor Arby taking on this responsibility and their family. So everybody, can you just reach out your hand again? Just where you are. Father, we just thank you for the Anana Ohana, Lord God. I just pray that you just touch them. Cover them, Lord God, under your precious blood. Father God, love on them, Lord. Show them favor. Bless them, Lord God. Keep their health. Keep their strength, Lord God. Bless their house and their finances, Lord God. Help them. Everything that they put their hands to, O oh God, may it be blessed, Lord God, and may others be, be blessed, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you have called not just Junior and Aubrey, but this family, Lord. Father God, we put no expectations upon the children. The calling is upon their parents. And so, Lord, just let the children feel your love from you and from us. We thank you, Father God, for this wonderful family that you have finally brought to us. Amen. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. But thank you, Jesus, for the Anana Ohana. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Thank you. I love you guys. <laughs> I'm so blessed and so happy that um, Pastor Junior and Pastor Aubrey have joined us, uh, be a part of our staff, our associate staff. And uh, a big weight is going to come off of my shoulders so we can do more things. We can expand the kingdom of God together. Amen. So at this time, we like to dismiss our children's church. can go with Auntie Emma and uh, Elder Lisa. It's kindergarten. Kindergarten to fifth grade. Kindergarten to fifth grade. <laughs> and also our youth can go with Minister Rachel. Sixth grade to twelfth grade. Amen. Hey, we're praying for you parents. Amen. We know what you guys are going through. Well, we don't really know what you guys are going through at home. But, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, posts on Facebook and on uh, social media, also in the news, about uh, the struggles that, that the parents are going through for online schooling. So, you know, we pray for you. We pray God's blessing uh, upon you. And, yeah, we thank you. Our Pauly Auntie, love you guys. I'm glad you could join us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And so without any further ado, I'm so happy. Uh, our co-pastor, Pastor Zena, is going to be giving the word this morning. So can we give her a hand, everybody? Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, um, God is just so good, yeah. He, I've had this message for a while, and I think it's like always His timing. It's always His timing. Like we had to prepare messages for for COVID with the recordings, and um, this was one of them. And like not coming out until now, so God knew what He was doing um, because this isn't a long message at all, really. And I think it's fitting for our. Um, installation that we just had and um just bear with me because i'm more like of a talk story kind of person um when bishop speaks yeah i'm i'm so not like that <laughs> so you know forgive me ahead of time um but i thank you for your your attention and just allowing the spirit to have his way amen Okay, so the scriptures that I'm going to be coming from is found in Colossians 3. 
and the verses are 12 to 17. And these scriptures were specifically chosen because they're scriptures that you have as a mom that you want for your children. And um, these were scriptures that I really, like when they were babies, I used to whisper it in their ear all the time. And it's because, you know, we know the goodness of God. We've experienced the goodness of God in our lives. And we want that for our children from the very beginning, you know. And so... Um, what the Lord was speaking to me when we were, you know, shut down and in quarantine is that, you know, to dive more into these scriptures that you've been quoting your children, you know, get to know them more. Because what I found out was the scripture before and after was just as important, you know, it had just as much meaning and power. Um, so, yeah, so this is me sharing what I've been learning. This is me sharing what God's been talking to me about. And um, I find it a really good privilege to be able to do that. But let us pray. Lord, I just um, thank you for using me. Thank you for your word that we can stand on. Thank you that your word reveals more and more of your heart towards us, Lord. Um, I constantly stand in amazement of what you show me as I read your word. And I can't help but to like continually stand in awe and be amazed at um, your love, just your love. And how you're there for us every single moment of every second of our lives. And that though we struggle and though we have this life that may be a little bit challenging, you're with us all the time, encouraging us, giving us exactly what we need. And so this is me being so humble and saying thank you so much for being so good. And, and as a pastor, we pray that for our congregation too, for each and every heart that is here and even on the, on the TV and radio that that they feel what we feel your heart and your love for people and for them individually lord and so will you just have your way with all of us speak to us as we read your word lead us oh god because we are listening and we don't want to move where you're not telling us to go we want to stay in your presence all the time so we pray and ask these things in jesus name amen Colossians 3, 12 to 17, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so a little bit history about Colossians yeah Paul is writing this to the people of Coloss and um what's happening at that time is that there's people that are called Gnostics and they are well that word Gnostics is derived from knowledge right what you know um they they depend on knowledge so much that they feel privileged and 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 supernatural revelation like because I know so much that I possess this privilege and the supernatural revelation necessary for salvation. So really, they were thinking that what I know will get me into salvation. And so all of these little subtle arguments, you know, Paul wanted to write to the church because there was an influence, right? It was There was that influence of knowledge. But, but really, the people of Colossae got saved, yeah? They got saved through Christ, and it was Christ alone that did that. And so sometimes, you know, I, I have degrees also, and sometimes knowledge can overtake your spirituality. And you have to be very careful with that, okay? And just to let you know, I, I do have my master's, and so I, I experience that all the time. I get scared with education because education can definitely take over your spirituality. Yeah, you can become God. And so that's not what we want for you. We want you to know that Jesus Christ is God. Yeah? To depend on him because he can get you out of it. 
Sometimes you cannot even get your own self out of it. No, most of the time, really. Most of the time, you cannot do it. It's always going to be God. Okay? And so this was important for the church to know, and it was important for Paul to deliver it. Because, you know, letting those things creep in, it, it challenges your faith. And so the NIV Study Bible, Quest Study Bible says, Paul intended to make clear the nature and identity of Jesus in order to refute those who challenged, challenged Jesus' deity and authority. Okay? The letter emphasizes the supremacy of Christ and what that means for everyday living and offers specific ways to develop attitudes and actions that honor the Lord. So a lot of times education can get you puffed up, can get you like really swelled and big, big headed. Yeah. And but when you put on Christ, you're putting on the 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 humility the humbleness, the gratefulness that you even had an opportunity to learn, you know, that you know all of these things and it's not for yourself, but it's for others, right? To share. That's always the purpose, okay? So just so you guys know that back history, that's why we're reading these kinds of things. So we're going to just get right into the word. Verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. So right at the beginning, Paul is saying, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. For us Christians, we need to know, to know, to know, to know who we are in the Lord. Yeah? We are holy. We are beloved. Because sometimes we don't think that we are. I don't know why that is. It's a continual fight. I don't know why. But we got to change our minds because the word of God says that Jesus loves us. For God so loved the world, yeah, that he gave his only begotten son. So all of that scripture tells us that Jesus loves us. Our kids, I, I, I teach preschool, three and four year olds, and they just love. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves the little children. You know, and I just got to tell them that. They don't believe them, you know. And I'm just like, it's so hard, though, yeah, for adults to really believe that. But with children, that's why we can learn so much from children. They show us so much. Oh, you love me? I love you back. I don't even know you. <laughs> you know, but as adults, we don't take advantage of that, right? So anyway, I, what I want you guys to know is that to know who you are. Yeah, you are holy. You are beloved. And only then can we move on. Because really, if you don't feel like you, you, Jesus no love you, then you cannot put on tender mercies. <laughs> you cannot put on kindness and humility and meekness and long-suffering. So make sure we acknowledge that first, yeah? The Apostle Paul is talking to us, the church, the elect of God, holy and beloved. This is an affirmation for us to know. We have to know that we know that we are holy and beloved. And we are holy because of Jesus' sacrifice, his dying on the cross for our sins, making us holy and righteous. Yeah, we're not holy because we just holy. We holy because Jesus died on the cross for us. And we gave, he gave his life for us, and we welcomed him and put him on the throne of our hearts. So because of Jesus' actions, we are loved. He died for us. That showed us love. He demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Also, First John 4.19, it says, we love him because he first loved us. He was the first. God is love. Yeah? Okay, but verse 12 tells us to put it on. Yeah? To put things on. We put on clothes every day. I hope. <laughs> I'm looking. We did. <laughs> We put on clothes every day, but this is what it's saying. Put on these things, you know. Oh, sometimes the slip on a match, you know. I've had that done before, too. You're wearing the wrong slipper. You've mismatched, whatever. Put them on, though. That's what this is saying. Put it on, okay, like clothes. I went further. Put it on like a smile, you know, like a smile. Like, that's things that you're going you're gonna to need this every single day. You're going to need tender mercies, yeah? Having compassion towards the miserable. To be merciful to everyone who needs it. People need lots of mercy. People need that. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not one who was to give it out so freely, you know? 
I, you know how you take one of those, um, what you call it? Those assessments of gifts. Yeah. And one of them is mercy. <laughs> oh, mercy was like number 10 <laughs> for me. <laughs> I was like, Lord, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> but you know, like, you just got to work at it. If you're not good at it, if you're not giving, just be honest. Because God can give you what you need, right? You just ask and he can give them abundantly to you. So, um, yeah. And then don't we have a great example? Jesus was so merciful. Luke 6, 36 says, be merciful as your father is merciful. Sorry, the, the Lord, our God, our God, the father. Also, we have to put on, besides tender mercies, kindness. Everybody say kindness. <laughs> you, you guys say it so well. Like, you guys just oozing kindness out. That's so good. <laughs> Either that or we're trying to say, like, kindness. Yes, that's me. Kindness. <laughs> well, if mercy wasn't my top, then I'm sure kindness wasn't either, you know? <laughs> Mine was more of, like, something else. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord goodness towards our friends and even to those who don't deserve it for the design of the gospel isn't only to soften the minds of men but to sweeten them and to promote friendship among everyone as well as re reconciliation it's something special to have kindness be shown to you amen. amen and so we should pay it forward and be kind to others humility everybody say humility Humbleness of mind and submission to those above us and respect to those below us. There must not only be a humble demeanor. So you're saying don't only look humble, <laughs> but be humble in the mind too. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. Hallelujah. We can do this. If I can do it, you guys can do it. <laughs> Meekness. Everybody say meekness. Gentle towards those who have provoked us or been nasty to us. We shouldn't be lured into a, any retaliation against others, but we must wisely withhold anger and patiently bear the anger of others. Yeah, this one is a little bit hard, yeah? Yeah, we can all be honest because, you know, we just need Jesus. I, I need him all the time, guys. So, yes, <laughs> put it on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's move on because it's not going to get any easier, but it's the last one. Everybody say long suffering. <laughs> Many can take a short harassing, but hardly a constant one. Yeah? Who long suffering. <laughs> But we must be patient with those who continue to provoke us. Okay? 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. <laughs> if God is long-suffering to us, we should exercise long-suffering to others also. Thank God that we got one perfect example or else we would be like, mm -mm, this is too much for us to, to handle. And so we do have our work cut out for us. And this is only the first verse, guys. Only the first verse. And we get already getting cracks. But anyways, um, the other one's going to go much smoother, I, I pray. But we must remember to put them on. Put them on daily. They're for our benefit. They're for others' benefits. And not only that, um, it can change people's lives. The more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. Yeah, uh, we tell our, our keiki all the time to continue to practice, continue to, 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 to do it over and over again. That's how you develop. That's how you get better. Like practice does not make perfect. Practice makes better. You know, um, I, it's, it's really hard because we don't, I, I know I don't want that for our children. Perfection. Got to be perfect. You got to do it the right way. You know, everybody is creative and different, you know? And so practice just makes better. When we practice our word, when we continue to put on these things and practice wearing them, practice putting them on, we'll get better and better at it. Amen? Verse number 13. 
bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Our relationships that we have provide practice for living out the Bible, putting into action what we read in God's word. Our relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit helps us to apply what we know. If you know that the Lord is good, then how are you living that, right? Our relation, um, we must remember that our vertical relationship with God is linked to our horizontal relationship with each other. Yeah? If this is not good, we better make sure that this is good. But see, this relationship is always going to help this relationship. Yeah? So, bearing or forbearing means to suffer, to bear with, to help out. So, you know, when you bear... I, you know, that's something that I've been actually saying a lot because we have virtual teaching and I got to share my screen all the time on Zoom. And I'm like, please bear with me. And they got to wait, you know, because I got to share my screen. And sometimes my screen no work, okay? <laughs> and it doesn't work. And they see my face because I cannot hide that. Everything's vis visual. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, you guys, the best family. <laughs> But, you know, like, like you, you got to bear. You got to just walk with them, stay with them. He like, even hold your, their hands sometimes. That's what it is, like, bearing, bearing that person that needs your help at the time. It's not like, okay, yeah, you got it. I see you. Go. Cool. No, it's like you walking to that person, and you're walking with them and helping them out. Yeah? You cannot be, like, distant. Okay. And then forgiveness. So forgiveness doesn't mean you approve of someone's sin or excusing evil. Instead, forgiveness means releasing people from the wrongs that have, they have done against you. Okay? So we not only have to bear with people, we also have to forgive. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses our God wants us to have good relationships with people and he's showing us firsthand how to do that yeah by us forgiving because he forgave us and so a lot of times you guys know we get into it a lot he, you guys hear it in the messages <laughs> I'm the emotional one I will I will lose it and get all cuckoo and and then and then he's the <laughs> and then he will be the one that you know pulls me back in and 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 so the reason why i say that is because he's so forgiving yeah i'm on the receiving end of of forgiveness and and to be in the receiving end is you feel blessed you feel released of that like thank you jesus that that somebody loves me enough to forgive me and continue to work on the relationship. And you know what? But Jesus is a better example, right? He does that for us. So, yeah, I love you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. What makes forgiveness possible is recognizing that the Lord has forgiven you. But to refuse to forgive is to burn a bridge over which you must cross. So really consider that, that forgiveness is really important, not only for you, but for the other person, but mainly for you. You get to have that peace, right? Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to move on to verse 4. I mean, for 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Hallelujah. So re remember I was saying put them on, put on the clothes, put on tender mercies and kindness. So love is the over, like the overcoat, yeah? In everything that we need, we do, it has to be applied with love, right? 1 Corinthians 13, we all know that. That's the love chapter, right? It tells you exactly what love is. And so we cannot have humility and all of that without really having love too, okay? So love is important and plays a big role in God's word and how we live our life. 
Cubby, he used to always, and I'm sure some of you, most of you may have heard this story that whenever he eat, he can tell if the stuff made with no, love or not, you know? And so when he eating, he's like, yeah, this is made with, and I'm not cooking. I'm not the cooker or the maker of the food. It's usually his tutu welch or his dad. <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is so made with love. I can feel the love. You know, then we go out and eat and everything's filtered through that, yeah. I don't think this was made with love. <laughs> we become critical of the, like, we can taste them. We know what love tastes like. <laughs> but it's just to, you know, everything. If we filter everything through that, through love, um, it'll be that much more better. Okay? Verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. When you focus your mind on the things that are above, yeah, God will give you the peace of Christ. Inner calm, regardless of the circumstances, to help encourage your decisions and the directions of your life. If you don't have it, if you don't have that peace, something is out of alignment. Okay? So in order for peace to rule, you must let the word of Christ dwell in you richly or fully. That's what verse 16 says. The word of God must be at home in you, welcomed in every room of your heart. Yeah? And so this was a revelation to me because I always used to quote verse 15 to my kids. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Yeah, I used to always do that. Verse 15 and 16 go together. <laughs> you got to know your word. You got to have something to stand on. Because God's word will not return void. Yeah, God's word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. God's word will help you to know if you're sinning or not. Yeah, that's why it's important for us to know God's word, okay? And it's not only for us, but for help of other people. So you can quote them scripture if they're sinning. They kind of get mad at you because you're telling them the scriptures, right? That's what the word of God says. That's not me. That's the word. So it helps others. It encourages others, okay? So just giving an example. I'm not saying that this is you guys. You know, when we visit, you know, people's houses, make yourself at home. Your house is our house, right? But you don't like us going to every single room. <laughs> Not that we want to go into every single room. <laughs> but really, um, the word of God needs to have access to everything. Everything in your heart. All the closets. All the bedrooms, all the cabinets, everything, all the storage, yeah? Of course get dirt. Of course get junk inside. Get plenty of that. But you know what? God already know. And he's the, bless, the best cleaner-upper, yeah? He switch filthy rags for white, clean garments, Yeah? Our sins, as Scarlet, he makes white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. And if you let him, he can clean it up. He does the best job. <laughs> and this is why worship is important, too. Worship is important, and having church is important, and we need it as much as we need each other in Jesus. Yeah? It brings us into one mind, one body, one understanding of what the word and the scriptures say. And so I'm closing, family, with verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you, Lord. Doing something in the name of Jesus is like authorizing a contract with his signature. You are to do everything in the authority of Jesus, making sure he approves of what we do. Jesus' name signed at the bottom of your day. 
means his power is behind your life. You are to do all things with his reputation in mind. And mind you, he gives access to him freely. He never did ever withhold anything from us when we asked him. May have took longer, you know, wasn't instant at times. But he never holds back himself. He gives it so freely. So whenever we need help in our lives, we can always depend on scriptures. We can always depend on his word and that he will come through. Yeah, I love the partnership that we have. It's a beautiful dance, a beautiful dance. The timing may not be the same timing as your guys' one. Is everything different? I love how God is individual, you know, maybe even different kind of music too. But it's a wonderful dance that we create with the Lord. And sometimes we feel awkward because, you know, I love to dance, but Bishop no like dance. He doesn't. He could care less for it. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, what I was trying to say is that not all of us are dancers. <laughs> not all of us are dancers. But the wonderful thing is that with Jesus, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because he will be the lead. Yeah, he will lead you in this beautiful dance that's going on between you and him. And he really is asking, will you? Because I want it. I want you to have this dance or this interaction with you. And what I can say is that the journey and the dance with him is, is beautiful. Because when other people are looking in, they see your light. You know, they see wonderful things and they ask. And you cannot help but to share that. And then when you're seeing that happen in other people and you see their dance that's happening with Jesus, you're just like amazed and blessed by what's happening. And in all honesty, we have such a great congregation that there's beautiful dancing going on for lack of a, you know, I could have picked something else, but I just picked dancing right now. <laughs> but there's beautiful things going on. It's appealing, it's wonderful, and it's all glorifying the Lord. And so, church, we, we and me wanted to just encourage you to continue, to continue on, because you can. You have everything that you need, and you're more than able and equipped to do it, to put on these things, to live it out, to bear with one another, to forgive, to do all that you do, yeah, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? So let us pray. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that this is your heart for people, that they don't have to live life on their own or alone, but that you help them. You provide clothes, and they're beautiful clothes to wear. You provide the engagement and the, and the help, the strength to forgive, the strength to bear with others. Lord, thank you, oh God, that the relationship that you're asking is really a partnership. And so may you bless your people here. Continue to encourage them as they work with their hands, as they walk the path that you have set before them. Encourage them, O oh God. Be with them, Lord. May you stir up the word, O oh God, that is in them. And may you also lead them, Holy Spirit, to continue to emua and to be blessed. We thank you, O oh God, for this time. We look forward to the amazing things that you will do as we practice your word and live it out. We thank you, O oh God, and we love you. May you bless the rest of our week. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless word, Pastor Zeno. <clears throat> now, Joyful Community Church, we're, at, we're a word and worship church. And the only way you can worship the correct way is if you know the word. That's why we're word and worship and so we thank God for Pastor Zena and all of our pastors who bring forth the Word of God and uh, not just bring it forth, but live it out. Um, you know, the scripture says, that, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Verse 16 says, Let the Word of Christ dwell within you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts. To the Lord, and that's what we do. Not just on Sundays, every day we speaking to the Lord, we worshiping to the Lord, 
And it's because we have his word. We have his encouragement. Uh, we have his confirmation in the word of God. You know, back on Oahu, I, I used to uh, coach football. I coached football for about 10 years from Pop Warner all the way to high school. And uh, I used to be a running back coach. I don't run. I, I coach running backs, praise God. <laughs> I tell them what to do, praise God. You know, but sometimes, you know, we have like ladder work or we have different, different exercises that we need the kids to do. And so it doesn't matter how much I tell them. Sometimes you got to show them. Sometimes you got to show the kids how to actually do the ladders. And so even as big as I am, I can do the ladders. So when I'm doing the ladders, the kids, they're tripping out. Whoa, so they see that I can do them. They're frustrated that they cannot do them. And so they look at my legs. The next thing they look at, oh, look at coach. He's jiggling. He <laughs> okay, i fat, but there still doesn't mean I cannot do them. At least I can do them. You know, so we're not here to just tell you what to do. We can do it. We all can do it. We all can live out what Christ is telling us. Amen. Because we have his word. And you know what? That's okay. Sometimes when we do what Christ is telling us, people going to laugh at you. People going to tease you. They're going to focus on stuff that don't even matter. Praise God. You guys understand what I'm saying? And so what Pastor Zina brought up this morning, I mean, beautiful. Beautiful. It's just talking about not just how we should act, but our attitudes and really what's in our hearts. Can we give Pastor Zina another hand? Amen. And so uh, at this time, I wanted to call up uh, Pastor Junior, Pastor Aubrey. You guys have a few words that you guys want to share or something? Yeah, before, before we close. Uh. My wife told me to, that I start. That's the first time. <laughs> nah, she, usually she starts. No. Um, first of all, we just want to say thank you to the church. Thank you for everybody coming out. And uh, first of all, thank you for showing up and worshiping God. Um, thank you for being a part of our installation today. It's, uh, it's new for us, and we're looking forward to working not only for you, but with you. And uh, just keep us in your prayers. Um, you know, I just wanted to, there's an encouraging word. Uh, don't give up on your dreams, Amen. especially the God dreams. Amen. Amen. Don't give up on the dreams. Uh, if you got to go get the cassettes, some of us been in the church a long time. You got to go get the cassettes and play them again. If you got a cassette player or you need to be reminded of the words that God spoke over your lives. Maybe when you were younger, as the spirit of God brings it back to your remembrance. Uh, if it hasn't happened yet, don't count it out. Yeah, the word that Pastor Zeno was sharing, God's timing is perfect. Uh, if you told me I would be here doing this as an associate pastor, I'd call you a liar and you uh, of the devil back in the day. He's like, get away from me, you devil. But uh, here we are, you know. It's been spoken over our lives. And, and just to encourage you, uh, when you chase after the God dreams and you, you walk, along, walk alongside with God and, and partner with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, that uh, the dream, God dreams come true, but even the dreams that you have, even the desires in your heart that he, he, that he knows is going to come through for you. So uh, be encouraged. Praise God. Oh, that was good. I should have gone first. Shoot. <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> just want to say thank you. Um, we don't take it lightly. Thank you so much, Bishop Fred and Pastor Zena and the church just for trusting us and... Um, we feel we already felt the weight when we said yes, <laughs> um, but I'm so grateful, and I honestly, it's just an honor. And um, if anybody needs anything, seriously, I just my heart is for people, and just I'm excited that God is entrusting us to do this, even with all our flaws, and we come as we are. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know that that he's patient with us and he has he been is. patient. And I feel like for a long time we ran away probably from our our call. We rejected a lot of things, but um, God is so good. I know it took us a while to get to JCC, but I'm so thankful to be here. And we knew that God told us to be here and just things have been moving. And I'm just grateful for the teaching. Um, I'm grateful for the mentorship and the friendship for sure. And Amen. And just, uh, 
I, I believe like we ooze love in this place and I'm so thankful that even the word today, Pastor Zena, that was so, you did such a good job. That was so awesome. And just, uh, it's a reminder that we can be effective in the community, that we do need to shine the light of Jesus. And, and just, um, yeah, we've been talking a lot about dreams. So definitely press into God that we can move forward. And there's things that God, um, don't be like us and run away from it for a long time. No, just kidding. But God wants to bring that up. God wants to pull that out of you. And I believe that this is the season, even, even though um, there's been adversity, this has been a strange time, but this is when we need to activate and move because there is a dying world. There's a lot of fear going on and, and we can be the church in the community. That's what we're all called to do, whether you have a title or not. We're all children of God. That makes us ro his royal priesthood. Like we, we are unique for a reason and we are creative and strange, but yeah, that works. God uses that too. So just want to encourage you church that yeah, uh, <laughs> you want to say something else about strange. Done, done. Oh, okay. Just that we just love you guys. Thank you for being an example to us as well. Yeah. So one more thing before you clap, Auntie Patty, we love you. <laughs> Auntie Huggy. Uh, <laughs> don't count yourself out. Amen. Don't count yourself out. God has already counted you in, so we'll all move forward together. If there's anything we can help you with, any of your dreams, anything, please ask us. Thank you. Bishop. Hey Amen. Say right there. So we got, we got your certificates. It's just certificates and the licensing that allows them to function and operate in this local body. And according to the vision that we have, so we thank God for that. And then uh, we bought them one printer because there's a lot of things that they're going to have to do. Thank you very much. Here you go. Praise God. They get their own printer now. First <laughs> Yeah. I give them a briefcase. So here you go, Pastor Judy. Give them a briefcase too. Praise God. <laughs> the strap stay inside. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Also get 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 extra ink. Get extra ink inside there. Oh. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so that is, oh Bishop, you can print them. Oh no no. Get extra ink inside there for you. I, I put extra ink. That's your guys' job. You guys print them. I go I go and print them for sale at home. <laughs> <laughs> Look for them on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, we just thank God for Pastor Junior and Pastor Aubrey. So just know when you guys hear their voice, you're hearing our voice. Yeah. And uh gonna take some time to get used to, but I, I, I know you guys love them already. And so the transitioning was easy. Amen. So anyway, new season for us. Uh we're just following the Lord, following the Spirit, what He has for us, and we thank God that we have the help of our our associate pastors, our assisting pastors, also our elders and our deacons. And uh, yeah, yeah, we just keep praying. We ask that you continue to pray for the Kala Ohana. Um, Deacon Kellyanne's funeral is coming up. We'll let everybody know once it's announced by the family. And uh, yeah, just continue to keep Deacon Ira in you guys' prayers. Anyways, uh, we had a wonderful Sunday, wonderful service. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we came to worship, Lord God, came to give, came to share, Lord, uh, to present your word to your people, Father God. Lord, help us to put into action the things that we heard today, Lord. Help us to apply your word. Father God, we thank you for your spirit, which gives us hope, which leads us into the truth and um, gives us and empowers us, Lord God, to live out your word. Lord, bless us this week. Help us to share Jesus with somebody. Let them know the hope that is within us. We love you, Father God. We thank you for all that you are doing. Lord God, not just with our church, but with all the churches, oh God, with all the Bible-believing churches. Father, continue to use us in this world when there's uh, lots of confusion and doubt, Lord God. You bring us hope. You bring us stability. Lord God, you, you gave us a future. You give us a future, Father God. And you gave us your plan, which is your word, Father. Help us to always trust in you and to trust you in all things. 
Bless us today, O oh God, as we carry on with our business. Help us to rest and to spend time with our families and our friends. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And God's people sit. Amen and amen. We love you guys. God bless you. You're dismissed. Aloha. <laughs> Yeah, all you gotta do